this is that rusty 67 basement that I've just installed a master volume in. It's the same I put in the very pristine 67 basement the other day. I guess it was yesterday now. And it's the same circuit that I put in those two Dr. Z's, the uh, Route 66's, and people have a lot of questions about it. So I thought I'd show you how to install it. Later I'll show you precisely what it is, how it works, pros and cons, yada yada. Getting started, this amp used to have two bias leak resistors, and they were between the blue wire and the yellow wire, and between the blue wire and the red wire. I removed those resistors and I removed the wires going from the yellow and red points to the tubes, and I've replaced them with these wires that you see here. It's very important that you keep the color code the same. Uh, the blue there is going to the bias. The red and the yellow are going to the outputs of those coupling caps. I have the red and yellow twisted tightly together, and then the blue is just wrapped around the whole thing. That gives a benefit much better than traditional shielded wire. It's much easier to do and looks vintage correct. You can use shielded if you want. Notice I'm not using a $30 two watt PEC dual gang pot. I've done that in the past. There's no real benefit. The uh, half watt alpha there works just fine. Dual gang 250K. Uh, what's crucial is you note that the yellow wire goes to the input on one side and the red goes to the input on the other side. And then the red goes there and the yellow goes there from the wiper of the pot. You cannot mix those up. You have to have your red and your yellow kept straight the whole time. The blue wire, the bias, goes to lug one down there on each side of the pot. And I've got some 2.2 meg resistors in parallel from wiper to uh, bias. That both forces it to be closer to the 220K of the stock circuit, more on that in a little bit. And also, should the pot fail and the wiper comes loose from the track, whatever, or it just gets really dirty, you're still gonna have some resistance there through that 2.2 meg resistor. There will still be a bias reference for the output tubes. And that's important because if you lose your bias, things go south. Now that I've talked about that kind of stuff, let me let you hear it briefly. Uh, this is a uh, 67 basement. I've got the volume at like four, so right where it begins to get gnarly. <laughs> So let's talk about what's actually happening in the circuit. This is a stock Fender-esque output section. This is pretty much what you find in every 760, AB763 and a lot of variants. Uh, you know, if you're not familiar with it, you can pause this and study it. You can look at the official Fender schematics. They're all drawn slightly different to this. This is how I like to draw them for my own work. But you can see between the output caps of the phase inverter there, there are two 220K resistors from each side going to VB, which is the bias reference voltage. And then that same part feeds the output tubes. When we go to the uh, dual gang pot, we're just replacing those 220K resistors with half of a dual gang 250K pot. And those 2.2 meg resistors there both give you a bias even if the pot were to fail, but they also, because you have a parallel resistance, they change the resistance from 250K to about 224K. You can use a 1.8 meg and get about 219K. You can use a 2 meg and get about 221K. It doesn't really matter. You're not going to hear any difference. I have the 2.2s on hand, so 224K per side is well with, within the tolerance of the original amp. And that works really well. When it's on 10, it acts just like the previous circuit you saw. And as you turn it down, you attenuate level. You're still keeping the phase inverter behavior. Any overdrive or clipping you get from the phase inverter is still there. And as you turn it all the way down, 
yeah, the negative feedback loop begins to fail. Below 10 o'clock, that's when you really begin to hear that. But a lot of the artifacts that you hear in an app like an AB763, or even in this case, the AA864 basement, though that's not what's shown on the drawing. There's enough happening with physics and how our ears work and how speakers work that you're going to have compromises below 10 o'clock anyway. It's not going to be perfect. There's no perfect solution with any master volume. But uh, for you know making it musically useful without getting evicted, it's great. And even at the very low volume stuff, it sounds fine for practice. If you're always turning a 100-watt amp down to just barely on, you may need to get a 10 or 20-watt amp as well as your 100-watter. Save the 100 watters for big gigs. The complication comes when you start to have an amp which has a present circuit, like you, here I've shown a Marshall one. Not only does the negative feedback circuit collapse, just like it does on the other one, but that collapsing negative feedback is much more audible because your presence goes away. And so all the highs that you had dialed out with that presence circuit come back in all their glory. So it can be a little bit fizzy at lower volumes. Again, nothing's perfect, but this is a very good musically useful option. Uh, it's reliable. It has a low parts count. Not much can go wrong. And uh, every owner whose amp I've put this in has been thrilled. I'm not the only one doing this. This is nothing that fancy. It's just reliable and sounds good. There are more complicated versions of this, which add an additional pair of caps. Sometimes they just do this to ground and they have the bias stuff right by the uh, grids of the tube. I find it more complicated, doesn't seem to sound any better, and it's harder to install in an already existing amp without doing big mods. So I don't do that. You can also just do a simple cross line, which works okay. The tapers on those is never that great. I'm not a big fan. I've tried, tried to like it. Anyway, I hope people find this interesting and useful. And if you uh, want to know more about this, you can Google it. It's called the Larmar. I think Fisher in his train wreck pages called it something else. I don't know if it's a type one or type two. It's not type three, but uh, you know, there are pills for that.